Terrell, I guess just talk about the fact that you and others who had to fill in for injured starters were able to get the job done. Um, obviously, that could have been a convenient excuse for not being able to win a ball game, and you all didn't let that happen. First off, uh, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for giving me this ability to play the sport. And um, through our practice, we, we just knew that it was a new opportunity for us. So we just knew all week through practice that we would have to grind it out, have to keep up the energy, have to pick it up just another notch than what we've been doing uh, the other weeks in practice because of those starters that we lost. So we just knew that it was a, a perfect opportunity for us. Well, not perfect, but an opportunity for us to step up to the plate. Sorry, I'm laughing. Strauss's comment was pretty funny. Yeah, I guess I do look like one of those people in the witness protection program. Sorry about the dark background. Um, what To make sure, were you playing Tuatelli's Will linebacker spot on Saturday night, or did you play Diego's Mike linebacker? Well, I was playing uh, Thomas uh, Will linebacker spot, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of, I imagine that you learned a lot in a full game of action like that. I mean, that must have been like a cram session for you. And just tell me how much of a better football player do you think you are after a full game of, I mean, that's a lot of reps, a lot of plays. Well, um, I'll admit it was a lot of reps compared to what I was getting. But throughout practice, um, what we do at practice, we rep guys like the twos and the threes just like the ones and the twos because we have this next man up mentality so when another man goes down we just know that it's time for that next player to just step up um it was a lot of it was a lot of reps and I feel like I learned a lot throughout that game did Tama help you out a lot with some pointers during the week perhaps and then just talk about I'm sure that coach Volker had to work really hard to get you and I guess it was Nicholas Strahl ready to fill in for Diego and Tama. Yeah, uh, Tama did a great job encouraging me throughout the week. Uh, just make sure I, I stayed up on my P's and Q's, uh, dealing with the linebacker uh, responsibilities. And Coach Volker, he just, it just really made the game plan simple for his young guys. But um, we just try, was just trying to prove to them that we could carry the load uh, of 54 and 45. So if indeed 54 and 45 come back, is it, Tough. I mean, here you're getting all these accolades this week and had a good game, and there's a chance you might be right back to number two. Um, well, if they do come – I mean, when they do come back, uh, I just want to still give my best effort to aim for the starting spot because I know Thomas is going to do the same. Uh, and the same goes for Nicholas and Diego. Um, everybody just fight for a starting spot. So, like, that's all we go to practice to do to uh, help each other get better. I'll pass off to someone else. Thank you. Uh, Phil Bergman. Hey, Terrell, uh, Phil Bergman with NavySports.com. Uh, having the game like you had on Saturday, what type of confidence does this give you that you can play at this elite level moving forward? Uh, I just know that I got to keep my head down, get back to the basics, and um, just keep working hard each and every day of practice, not taking this and getting a big head over it and knowing that um, – when it comes to the next, just moving on to the next game, trying to accomplish the same things, trying to elevate my craft even more, um, and not just uh, resting on my laurels of the last game. And uh, I believe you have a twin on the team, is that correct? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, just What was that like after the game, talking with him and experiencing that together as a family, uh, just getting that play that you did on Saturday? Yeah, um, it was just like, a moment we've been waiting for both of us. Um, we've been talking about how we just needed one chance to uh, get our name out there or whatever, just to do what we can to help the team. Um, and he was out there as well uh, during special teams, doing his thing, uh, blocking on key return, how Miles and Chance got those uh, breakaways. Uh, so everybody just doing that part is really what uh, took us there. And uh, being able to have that moment with him, um, it was real special. And then lastly, just more of a curiosity, maybe an anecdote. Uh, you have JT on the, uh, your last name. What's the J and uh, why that and not just T. Adams? Uh, I go, my name is uh, Jerome Terrell Adams Jr. So I'm a junior. So people call me Terrell because uh, they call my dad Jerome. But uh, JT, I guess they just put it on there to just keep the Jerome in there, not just T. Adams. But I like it because uh, 
just have a piece of my dad with me. Tell me what it was like to knock aside that two-point conversion at home in such a big win. Uh, originally, uh, actually, I was uh, thinking about picking the ball off, but I was just thinking, like, I can't get my other arm around to uh, get both hands on the ball. So as the ball was coming, uh, I just decided to knock it down because I knew the game would be over. Uh, offense would get back on the field and uh, run the clock out, take a knee, do what they have to do. What was it like for you to, to culminate that game with being the next man up, coming in and filling in and having such a big game on defense to make a big play like that? Really uh, just to focus all week, um, just attacking the game plan, knowing the game plan, knowing what the opponent's going to do. Um, when we got to the hotel, I just sat in my room for a minute and prayed about what I was supposed to do, making sure I knew my assignments and stuff, um, just asking the Lord, uh, to give me strength and to uh, fill me with his spirit in order to go out there and play the way I play. What's the key for you when you move in to play Will in the chaos defense for Coach Newberry? Uh, just just uh, learning the playbook because at first I was at safety and um, I really didn't know a lot there because I was on scout team last year. But um, I just knew this year I had to get in the playbook, learn the plays, learn the scheme of our defense. And uh, so I could attack practice full speed, even if I do make a mistake, make it 100 miles per hour, like coaches say. Now, you talk about speed. Speed is such an important part of your game. Tell me about your background in track and field and how that's helped you as a college football player. Um, yeah, with track, uh, my trainer back home, he just uh, worked a lot about uh, getting my knees up and running with my knees up and uh, uh, hip to elbow. I mean, uh, hip to ear with my hands. And uh, with track, I ran the hurdles and um, just learned how to get out of the blocks. It just really helped with my speed and uh, endurance with the 300 meter hurdles and 800 um, meter uh, dash, stuff like that. What is it like for you in practice to see the two starting linebackers in front of you? What have you learned from them watching them practice each day? Uh, just learning how to attack practice, learning how to go out each game and give it your all no matter what. Um, seeing them come off on the sideline, they breathing hard, but they don't have their hands on their hips. They tired, but they're not showing it. They go out there at full speed and attack each and every play at full speed. So it just really encouraged me to go out there and try to strive to be on their level. How proud are you to be the American Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Game representing the Naval Academy? Uh, it's a great accolade. Um, but I can't really like rest on it. Um, I'm proud. I'm proud of myself for accomplishing it, and I always remember it. But I know it's time to get back uh, to work because we have ECU this week. Um, just trying to. So we still got something to fight for. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, um, that we still got the AAC to fight for. So going three and zero, being one and zero this week, going being three and zero in the conference is our main goal. And finally, what has it been like playing with your twin brother, not only through high school, but now in college? Um, We've just been dreaming of this moment to be Division One football players uh, on the field at the same time. Um, just living out a childhood dream from when we was in fourth grade, and we asked our dad, could we play football? Uh, and it's just been up from there. Well, congratulations on being the Conference uh, Defensive Player of the Week and also the Naval Academy Athlete of the Week, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Well, yeah, I guess, first of all, talk about, you know, were you proud of the fact, you know, you're depleted, you've got four or five of your best defenders don't play the first half with Kevin out, uh, four of them don't play the whole game, and yet, you know, you held up, you made some plays, you did enough to get the, the victory. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys, you know, we – to win that game, I, you know, I think to bounce back from, you know, what happened the previous week. Um, and like you said, that to have some of our, you know, our, our starters out, some of our best players out, uh, we had some guys step up and, and do some good things. It certainly wasn't, uh, wasn't pretty. Uh, and, and we've got to fix a lot of things and, and continue to get better, like I said, each week. Uh, but the fight, the effort was, was really, really good. Um, you know, we just, just kept playing. Kept playing, find a way to make a make a play there at the end. Uh, wish it wouldn't have gotten down to that point uh, to, to have to stop them on a two-point conversion, but uh, we did. And and, uh, and I thought we played complimentary football on Saturday. You know, offense got it going. They held the football a lot, which we knew we needed to do in that game. And 
And uh, that was a good offensive football team that we played. it would be interesting to see how they do moving forward. But um, to have two guys start at linebacker for their first game, to see all the things that we saw on Saturday that they were not prepared for, uh, new wrinkles that, that, that they, they had in the game plan. Um, with all that being said, just to, to win that game was, was huge for us. So, uh, yeah, really proud of our players and, and their, their fortitude and their resilience and, and uh, their fight. So for young guys like Terrell Adams and Nicholas Straw and Derek Atwaters and, you know, got a lot of reps in that game by necessity, did, did I guess they grow immensely. There's no, nothing better than trial by fire, huh? Yeah, n no question. You know, you look at a guy like Terrell who played extremely hard, made a lot of mistakes, but made a lot of, you know, good plays for us as well. Um, was proud of the way Derek Atwater played. I think, um, you know, when, he, when we got a chance to sit down yesterday and watch that game film, uh, certainly a lot of things need to get corrected. There's just little bitty things that are going to make him a lot better player. And sometimes when the lights come on, you do some things that are uncharacteristic. You might have your eyes in the wrong place and, and those kind of things. So just a lot of little details, clean up, simple alignments, uh, eye placement, a lot of eye violations, you know, with those new guys, which you kind of expect. Um, but, yeah, Mitch West um, played the entire first half. I thought he, he did well when he was in there. Um, so it was an opportunity for those guys to get in there and learn and grow and, and earn some trust. Um, but, yeah, I was, I was proud of those guys. Do you feel good that you'll get those injured guys back this week, or is it too early to say at this point, Coach? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's still too early to say at this point. It'll be another game time kind of decision. So I'm hoping um, to get And then a lastly for me, before I hand it off, um, do you, how well do you know the ECU D coordinator who re replaced you at Kennesaw State? Uh, I know him pretty well. Um, you know, we never worked together, uh, but we worked camps together. Uh, we, we've talked on the phone several times about things. You know, he, he came in right behind me at Kennesaw, as you mentioned. Uh, so we had a lot of discussions when, when that took place. I think he's a really good coach. Uh, obviously, you know, being at Kennesaw for a year, you know, he's had to defend the option there. He was at Citadel before that, so he had to defend the option every day in practice there. So he's a guy that's going to understand uh, how to defend it and, you know, some of the finer points and nuances about uh, getting ready to defend the team that runs the option. All right, uh, Bill Bergman. Hey, Coach. Uh, the quarterback for ECU, he seems like a good pro-style guy, about 6'3", 230. What have you seen from him out there? And uh, are you guys ready for that challenge? Yeah, I think he's outstanding. I think when they get going and they're in a the rhythm, he's as good as anybody will see. Um, you know, we, we caught him early last year. I think it was the second second or third game of the year. Um, you know, they were in a new offensive system. Uh, I think toward the end of the year, you saw him really, really tear some people apart uh, in the secondary. Um, he's big, physical, lefty, he can make all the throws, the things uh, that he does really well. Um, you know, he, he's athletic enough to hurt you with his feet. A little bit of quarterback running there, but when you, when you pressure, he can break tackles because he's so big. Uh, and he gets out of the pocket, and uh, he locates receivers downfield, throws the ball really, really well on the run. Uh, and he's got some really, really good targets to throw it to. You know, and, and they're a, a, a team that they'll take what you give them, uh, but if they can get the run game going um, and they RPO off of that and they've got a really good play-action pass game and then they you know, drop back pass, he, when they get the ball going and they can run it uh, and they get into a rhythm, I think they're really, really good. This doesn't seem like the same East Carolina team as years past. Uh, what are you just preaching to the guys this week heading into the game? Yeah, what's well, not? It's not going to be anything like the game game was last year. You know, I watched last year's game last night, and we got after them pretty good. Uh, but you know, they're they're second year in the program. Um, you know, just watch them. They're 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 much better up front than they were a year ago. The quarterback's been in the system now for a year, um, and he's got a lot of returning targets that he's familiar with. They understand each other a little bit better than they did maybe when we played them last year, obviously. And so uh, it's just – it's a more greased-up operation. Um, and they're, they're clicking uh, pretty good right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder, if you have a question, type question in the chat box. Uh, Dave Richmond from the Sports Objective in North Carolina. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Coach, I want to ask you about the freshman running backs for the Pirates with uh, Mitchell and Harris. They really uh, added a lot of depth to the running back room for East Carolina. I want to ask you your thoughts on them. Yeah, I think they're both really good players. Um, 
they've got a lot of depth at running back. I think they're really good at that position, really athletic, uh, break tackles, physical. Um, you know, the run game uh, certainly scares me. But, yeah, those, those guys are, are concerns, and, and they're good football players. Any follow-up, Dave, or is that it? Anyone uh, else? As far as, oh, yeah, I was going to ask one more if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Uh, the offense uh, this year has had times when it looks like there are sparks where they're looking good. Um, one of the things is that Pirates have 54 new players this year. And you were talking about last year's team. They are improved, but it, I guess it depends on which Pirate team you get. Yeah, what I've seen this year, um, like I was kind of alluding to earlier, once they can get that running game going a little bit, you know, which I think the one game that, uh, you know, Georgia State game, they weren't able to get it going. Um, but when they do and they get into a rhythm, they're, they're a really good football team. I think they're really well-rounded. You know, they can run it and throw it. And uh, the offensive coordinator does a great job. Um, you know, they, they take what you give them. You know, if they've got to throw it 50 times to win, they, they can do that and they have the tools to do that. And um, if, if, if they need to run it 50 times to win it, they, they're able to do that too. And so they're extremely well balanced, which is always a challenge uh, to defend. Um, but it starts with the quarterback, uh, and I think he's a really, really good player. Who else? Wags, any follow ups? Well, yeah, like, um, you know, I don't like to present you with hypotheticals, but let's say a Tom Atuatelli is able to come back. You know, Adams played well and made some plays, had a good numbers. I mean, how do you handle that? Do you think a guy can lose his starting job by injury, or do you basically roll him out there and practice and say, whoever practices better this week, you know, you know, what have you done for me lately type situation? Yeah, you know, those guys compete and practice all the time. So, and, and Tom has won that job. Um, you know, right now, and as well as, as you know, as, as, as many good things as Terrell did for us Saturday, um, he, he still should be a backup for us at Will Linebacker. Um, you know, so uh, if Tom is ready to go and, 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 um, and he has a good week of practice, then we'll roll him out. And uh, the good thing is that Terrell got a lot of really good game experience, and now you feel better about relieving a guy like Tama and putting him in there to keep Tama fresh and uh, getting him a lot more reps. You know, anytime you get a guy like that that gets kind of thrown in the fire, we had this discussion in my in my position meeting today. Uh, those guys start to earn trust with you. You feel better about putting them on the field. You know, they're not they're not going to lose their minds. I know they're going to make plays and run around. And, um, so, really encouraged by what Terrell did. Um, he's going to continue to get better, like I said. But he's – keep in mind, you know, he was a safety. We moved him to linebacker during camp. Now, he's new to the position. He's still learning. Uh, made a lot of mistakes on Saturday, like I expected he would, uh, especially in a game like that when you're, you're defending things that you haven't seen in practice. Um, and I knew that was going to be a challenge. It was. Um, but we always talk about, you know, playing with great effort around here, and sometimes that can cover up some mistakes. And uh, that certainly was the case uh, at times on, on Saturday. Bill pointed out when we were interviewing Terrell, and I didn't quite put two and two together, that he's got a twin on this team. Um, is that kid playing striker right now? And do you think he's got some ability? I guess he, Terrell said he plays on special teams, like on a kick return or something like that? Yeah, sure does. Yeah, so, so Josh, is uh, he's, he's at striker. He's a backup at striker uh, right now. He's a, he's a backup striker in dime. Uh, he's in the depth at, at striker in our base. Um, very similar to Terrell, really hard worker has some tools and, and is helping us on special teams as well. And lastly for me, um, I guess Pearson got the bulk of reps at nose guard. Um, did you run out a second nose guard? I don't know the five, is Flowers back? Is he, I don't think Flowers, has Flowers played since? Uh... Yeah, he played Saturday. Um, I don't know how many reps he played. Looking at my sheet here. Um, he played 20 snaps on Saturday. So he was in there. Um, he's back. He's, He's almost back to 100%. I don't know if he'll ever be 100% healthy. Some of the things he got, they're going to kind of linger throughout the year. But um, we're going to get uh, get him cranked up. And, and Pearson probably played a few too many snaps in there. You know, he's a big body, but, um, you know, needs to split time at, at that position. Coach, are you and uh, Coach Niamatololo spoke all last week about being more physical and about establishing the fullback dive. You were able to do both. Can you talk about that? 
It was a good day. Um, obviously, it was good to see our guys, us come out and play Navy football. Um, it was an important game for us, important game for our program. Um, but also, it was good to get off to a great start. Take the first drive down, you know, you know eat up some clock, go down there and uh, put it in the end zone. So it was a good start to the game. And then from there, just continued. The guys played physical. Uh, we took care of the football. Um, you know, great decisions uh, all around. Uh, it was a solid night for us, you know, and hopefully we, uh, we can build on that and uh, keep, keep this thing, this momentum going. Ivan, anything in particular that the offensive line did differently or better than what they had been doing to date? I mean, they just seemed to really come off the ball. They established a new line of scrimmage downfield and, you know, really created openings. The fullback was getting four and five yards a pop, which is exactly what you're looking for. Um, it was just a gut check, you know, um, got embarrassed, um, our pride hurt, you know, um, got hit in the mouth and we had to answer. Um, it's like anything else, you know, when you, when you get embarrassed and get your butt kicked, man, you always want to, uh, want another chance at getting, going out there and uh, making up for, um, you know, rectifying things. So that's mainly what it was, it was more of a challenge. So our guys up front, um, coach Neil, you know, got after those guys in the team meeting about, um, you know, just, uh, being a physical football team, being a physical old lines where it all starts at. So they, they, they took it personally and they came out and, uh, and showed up. And how do you make sure this, you know, continues to progress in the right way? Cause you all have been somewhat inconsistent and you got to put two games together now. Exactly. Um, just, uh, you just gotta, you gotta continue to coach, um, you know, st stress the fundamentals, stress the issues, but also just stress, uh, again, just stressing going out and playing Navy football. Um, yes, it's been inconsistent for the year, but we finally came out and, um, play the game like, like we normally do, eat up the clock, be very, very physical, and also score points when you do that. It's always important to score points when you eat the clock up. So we did that as well. So just a matter of continuing this play. Um, when you get a taste of it, you want, you want to keep doing it again. So i um, got big ties this weekend uh, against a good uh, ECU football team. Um, we're going to continue to stress the issues and continue to, you know, take our baseball bat mentality and get after these guys, and, and uh, they, they'll, they'll respond. Last for me for now, um, Coach Neil Matalolo reached quite an impressive career milestone, 100 career victories, and we spoke to him, and he's, you know, obviously said yesterday that it, this is a program thing and all so many players and coaches and support personnel involved. But you being a longtime friend of his, known him so long, how happy, proud are you for Coach mm -hmm. Neil to reach? You know, that's a really a major milestone, 100 wins for any head coach, pretty darn good. You know, when you work for a person that's, that's been, you know, so good to you, um, your family, um, on and off the football field, you know, and again, we're good friends. So just you can't be happy for a person. He deserves everything that comes this way. I know he's very modest and doesn't want to accept anything, you know, pushes everything off uh, to the players and to the staff, to the staff. But, you know, the reason this program is, is doing what, what, uh, as well as it does because he builds it that way. Um, it's all about treating people the right way, treating players the right way, treating coaches the right way. Again, giving us balance in our lives. We're able to go home and see our families and sleep in our own beds, you know, and come in refreshed, you know. So um, his blueprint for his program, um, he's followed uh, for as long as he's been a head coach and uh, it's paid off um, for all of us, you know, just again, for us to be, to be again, I'm gonna keep saying it, husbands and wives, because that's what he always tells us. I'm just, again, I'm just truly happy for him, you know, and I hope we can get 200 more, you know, that, and that's always the goal to keep to keep winning football games. It's a it's a great accomplishment. Um, uh, truly and truly happy for him, you know, as a as a coach to coach and as friend to friend. So uh, I just want to continue to do the best job I can to uh, to keep, you know, putting out a great product on the football field so to continue to win games. Bill Bergman. Hey, coach, I don't know if you know the answer to this specifically, but at ECU Stadium, uh, 500 yards averaging for offense, 66 points a game. What clicks for you guys down in that stadium? No, nah, really, I'm, I'm not. They want to get into any of that this week. We try not to even mention that to our guys. You know, yes, we, we play well going down there, you know, but I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's just we've just played well. I don't know if there's anything about the, about the field or anything, man. Um, but definitely we want to continue that trend. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, but we just, just tried to. Do not say much about it this week to our guys. Um, you just need to go out and uh, have tunnel vision, focus on our assignments, focus on our, our game plan. And again, so, so just like when we ask, ask we got to keep this thing going, man. We can't keep going up and down. And we got we got to stay consistent, you know, and, I, and obviously keep raising the bar and keep playing well. So, yes, it's been 
it's been really good going down there to play and uh, hopefully uh, the trend continues. And then Nelson Smith, what really impressed you about him on Saturday? Well, I mean, I've, well, again, I'm gonna go back to just the way he's handled things. Um, you know, he was the starter, you know, last year and then Jamel came out of nowhere. And, you know, I, I, and I won't say Nelson was an afterthought, but Jamel, Jamel got all got all the praise and, and rightfully so the kid played great last year. But Nelson never complained or anything like that. You know, so I think for me, for more than what he did on the football field Saturday, I'm just more impressed with the way he's, he's handled it all the entire time. He um, didn't get his head down. He um, he kept working. He even supports Jamel when he's in there. I mean, Nelson was the biggest fans, you know, so. But again, happy for him. This was his, his this was his kind of football game. And he ran that way. He was a very, very physical kid. Um, again, he's probably the fastest kid out of his stance that I've ever seen in this offense. I've ever seen. And we've had a lot of good football players. This kid gets out of his stance into the line scrimmage as fast as I've ever seen. So um, we played that way. And again, for him, um, just hope that we can continue this one, two punch of those guys. Their reps were about the same, you know. So I think we got a good formula with, with those two, and we'll continue to push this thing forward. I wanted to ask you as far as the East Carolina defensive line, there's a lot of, uh, there's talent there, but a lot of inexperience, a lot of new players this year. Just want to get your thoughts on, on them. Well, you know, it, it, for us, it doesn't really matter, you know, um, what's on the other side of the ball as far as, you know, experience. We got to take care of who we take care of. Um, again, some, some players can be young, but they can be really good football players. So we don't know what to expect going down there. Um, yes, they did lost a lot of guys off of last year's defense, but the biggest thing for us is just to focus on focus on Navy, on our offense, um, being assignment sound, um, and playing good football. So, um, again, we played well when we going down there. We're going to continue that trend, and um, again, whatever lines up across from us, we're going we're going we're going to be who we are, play physical, and get after it. Anything else, Dave? Thanks. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, Gary Lambrick. All right, let's try that again, Ivan. Sorry. Uh, oh, no doing this piece on uh, C.J. Williams, and uh, I just want to ask you for starters, when you just consider all the obvious ways, the big play ways uh, he, he contributes and, and the way he blocks and everything about his personal makeup and what he brings to your table every day, could you sum up just what, what that young man means to this program? Well, he's a – He's a silent assassin, man. I mean, he, he, the kid doesn't say much of anything, you know. I, I say he's one of the coolest guys on the football team. This, this guy's just, you know, I mean, I caught, I think I called Miles. I think he's, he's Butter and, and, and CJ is Marjorie. They just, just, uh, two, two really smooth guys. But again, really good football player, a really good football player. Um, again, very unassuming. You know, not this real big guy, you know, not a blazing fast guy, but the kid just makes plays. And the big thing about CJ is he's consistent. Um, I'm thinking the kids ever had a bad game. Um, he made one of the best – one of the best things last year for him was uh, in, in the Army game, Malcolm's – they Malcolm's first touchdown run. No one is – I don't think any A-back could have did what he did when he lined up and they fired a corner. And he just really subtle, just turned out and just leaned into the guy and just – and the guy tripped over him. But that's what – what he does. He's a very savvy football player, very smart. And he's just been rock solid for us, man. Rock solid for us. Um, has always showed up. Has always been consistent. Um, plays very, very well. Makes big plays, as always. And I'm just happy he's on our side, you know. And, um, and again, senior year for this kid. Um, great family. Great football player. And I hope we can finish this thing up strong for him and all the rest of the guys. You know, when you look at, at the recruiting of this kid, I mean, he had some Ivy choices. He had some other offers light offers maybe almost offers d1 and i know there's a lot of five eight guys that are fast out there but mm -hmm. playing against that kind of six a competition in texas and and doing the things he did on tape mm -hmm. how does it like that not even get recruited by the other service academies not i'm not telling you tee it up and blast army but wow. i just can't believe you didn't fight or fight for him with them you know yeah i'm, I'm not worried about those other two guys i'm just happy <laughs> playing for us you know um yeah Again, I, I don't know what their philosophies are, you know, but we just try to find kids that fit our system. And again, yes, would you would you want him to be, you know, a super fast kid? Now, if he was a super fast kid, he might would have got those power five. He can go play slot for anybody, just like Malcolm could have. Malcolm could have been a great slot at any power five school, you know. So, but um, we just try to find the kids that fit our system, fit our, fit our makeup. But most importantly, again, see what kind of people they are. You know, um, it's always great to see them on paper. 
Uh, yes, he can make plays, um, good player and all that. But now when you go meet the kid, want to see what kind of person they are. You know, um, again, around his family, um, how, how to treat his mom and stuff like that. All that stuff comes into play before we allow a kid to come into our program because Coach Nima wants to bring in good people. And he fits everything about wh who we are. And I'm happy the other two guys didn't look at him, you know, so I'm happy he's here. Well, you know, and given his his obvious ability, and it's, it's eerie how he might not just – he might get two or three touches a game and the yards per touch in his career uh, are, are remarkable. In this – playing against that league and, you know, every year, the Army game, the Notre Dame game, and he finds ways to get open, to find space, and that's – there's something special in that. Hey, again, I say he, he's, a, he's a savvy football player, and – I noticed just one time last year, uh, we went to visit uh, with the uh, with the Patriots. I hope I say it's the right way. Um, now, outside of Gronkowski and all those guys, you know, some of their skill, some of their skill players, you know, they weren't this, you know, you think they say guy that's all muscled up and they were just like regular looking guys, but they're just great athletes, man, and great players. You know, you, you think you want to see a guy that, you know, all muscled up and chiseled out and all that, but some of the guys were just, were just regular guys, but when they get on the football field, they were just good football players. That's kind of how CJ is, you know. Again, not a big kid, you know, and again, not intimidating, nothing like that. But when the ball comes this way, he finds a way to make a play. When the ball's in his hand, he finds a way to make a play. When the ball's not in his hands, he finds a way to make a play for somebody else to make a play. So complete football player, my man. And again, I'm I'm just I'm just happy he's wearing navy blue and gold. Thank you, Adam. My pleasure. Thanks, Gary. Wags, any follow-ups? Well, going back to something Phil mentioned about your success against East Carolina as a whole, in particular down there, um, obviously they have struggled against the triple option. I don't know that you can count on that this year with the, this staff is much more uh, knowledgeable of the option, the D coordinator, the head coach, yes. uh, even the D line coach, their head coach is saying the D line coach has a lot of experience mm -hmm. in option football. Can you discuss that? And the fact that you probably, going to be seeing a little bit different approach yeah i mean it's it's when you go into a game you, you're going to have your plan then when a the game starts you got to start formulating different things um like last week we had a plan we, we come out on the very first play and it is nothing what we had worked on maybe maybe two snaps of what we saw we had we had did last week you know so the game plan we had to just basically rip it up and then go uh make adjustments so i'm um, going to this game i'm going to see it any different um, would they play the same way they did last year? Who knows? We just got to game. We just got to take care, take care of who we are, be assignment sound, just make sure our kids know where to go so we can execute. Um, again, yesterday they have experience uh, playing this offense. Yeah, and we can't expect going down there and, and, and scoring a lot of points like, like we've done before. But we have to go down there. We have to play Navy football. We got to take care of the football. We got to score points. We got to find to have one point at the end of the game, have one more point than they do. You know, So we'll find out.